What's up, Husky Dogs? It is me, Mark Soloff, and welcome to another standard episode of Muffed Movies. With me, as always, for now, is your glamorous, amorous co-host, all the way from Iowa City, Dave Stecco. How do? I've been standardized for your protection. <laughs> Dave, thank you for being on Muff Movies this evening. Oh, I have been looking forward to this for a long time. And Me I'm too. super pumped to be here. Uh, just a time check for you chrono uh, nerds out there. <laughs> We're recording this on uh, Thursday, July 25th, 2024. So if I'm really playing drag ass with editing these episodes, you might hear it in the future. <laughs> or you might, you might hear it this year. <laughs> or you just edit this part right back out again and none's the wiser. Yeah, just a time check for you survivors of the American apocalypse. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, in a dust-covered hellscape, <laughs> someone will find a hard drive with this on it or just one of our audios. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what, what the other man said. <laughs> could it, <laughs> and could it have promised salvation? An entire cult pops up. Somewhere there's a man who knows what was spoken. Does he know where the water is? <laughs> Oh, does he have any guzzoline? We are going to be muffing Mad Max Fury Road. And Dave, when we started down this Mad Max journey, uh, I absolutely thought Fury <laughs> Road was going to be was going to be our show stopping finale of this Mad Max a thon. But they then just they keep fucking... dragging us. In. <laughs> they squirted out a new one. <laughs> Which I have yet to see, but I'm sure is a, a high high octane thrill ride. It, I did go see it. Uh, it like... is the only movie I've seen in a theater in I think four years, and I thought it was great. Oh, good. Yeah, good. something to look forward to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm, Red oh. Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> is that a real thing? <laughs> I would love it if there was. I, I don't think Red Yoda is a real thing. I think that it's like a bizarre inside joke that we have where like there was never a Red Yoda to begin with. And and I think every time I bring up Red Yoda, we have this conversation. There was never like a joke. I think <laughs> It's just a non sequitur that won't die that exists only within our headcanon. It, it is perfect to have Yoda... <laughs> Like the the many versions of Yoda stitched to the many versions of the Hulk. Yes. <laughs> Red Yoda. Red Yoda forever. That's our merch. <laughs> yeah. Get on uh, T Public. Make it happen. Yeah. I mean, Muff Movies has been going for about nine years. It's about time we had a merch. Yeah. I've got uh, two, at least two different Muff Movies shirts. Yeah. I like to send out the t shirts to my real. Uh, legendary champions. Oh no, I bought these with my own money. Oh, sorry, I only sent them to the legendary champions. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why I work so hard. I'm gonna get there someday. <laughs> someday. Um. So yeah, today we are. Oh, if this is your first time listening to Muff Movies. Number one, welcome. <laughs> number two, Red sorry. Yoda. <laughs> Red Yoda. <laughs> Hashtag Red Yoda. <laughs> um. Uh, Muff Movies is the podcast where we satirize and parody and act out famous movies using only our voices, our improv abilities, and some tiny notes. Today we're going to be moving Mad Max Fury Road, and it's, it's going to be so great. <laughs> it's going to be so great, guys. <laughs> you, you, you think you know? You don't know. It's going to be know. so great. You don't know shit, motherfucker. <laughs> Strap your dick to your ass because guess what? <laughs> you won't be needing it for the next two hours. We've got it handled. <laughs> yeah, we've got your dick and your ass handled. <laughs> that's that's the, the Muff Movies guarantee. <laughs> Boy, we're just generating t-shirts left and right here. Dick, period, ass, period, <laughs> handled, period. <laughs> Put it on a poster. <laughs> Dave, are you ready to muff this? I, I'd i like to believe I am, and there's only one way to find out. Yeah. Blood test. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will you do the honors of the musical aspect? <clears throat> <clears throat> ba, 
Muffed Movies presents Mad Max Fury Road. It is a time of post apocalyptic insanity within the continent of Australia. Max Rakitansky, the man who has lost many loved ones to his negligence, former cop, now vigilante of the wasteland, just tries to survive within this irradiated hellscape. Will he survive this adventure? Find out as Muff Movies continue. Smash cut. Boom, 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 boom. It's a cloud of blood and putrid aerosolized urine. It can only be the hellscape that is Max Rokotansky's psyche. We see drifting through the murk and mire of this existential nightmare the faces of all the people Max has known and loved and failed to rescue from the death of the grisly road, the rough and tumble metal screeching across their chests and spines. We see Sprog, his <laughs> 10-year-old boy, getting thrown about in the back of a Studebaker. We see Goose, his best friend, savagely burned up by hell bikers and left to convalesce in a hospital room. We see um, uh, the lady from The Shining or something playing a saxophone, <laughs> sadly looking at her divorce papers. A pink neck neck handkerchief blows across the blasted landscape. Oh, his Captain old... Fifi. <laughs> Captain Fifi, where <laughs> are you now? <laughs> Honestly, I'd prefer to see a Captain Fifi uh, spinoff than a Furiosa origin story, because that guy... That guy fucking rocked. Yeah. yeah I completely, he's... I completely agree. He's a Superman. He was a, a creature uh, too good for this world. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't deserve the world he was dropped into. But damned if he wasn't made for it. If y'all don't know what we're talking about, check out the original movie Mad Max, or listen to the Muff Movies episode of Mad Max, where we continue to polish the legendary man that is Captain <laughs> Fifi. I want to say Fifi Larue, but I'm pretty sure that's not <laughs> the kiss character's name. Uh. Anyway, uh, yeah, Max is having a hallucinogenic trip out while also leaking the lizard, taking a piss off of a cliff like a real wasteland motorist likes to. He sees a little girl named Hope, who was not in any of the movies, mm -mm. just nuding it. <laughs> oh, Alien fans. Struth, it's a, it's a new vision that torments me. Ah, shit. <laughs> Max, you let me die or something. I'm pretty sure of it. Ah, she turns into a skull, and Max is jarred from his reverie. He shakes off his, like, mm, just like thick and crispy stream of urine, because he's in, not only is he in the apocalypse, but it's fucking the desert of Australia, the oh, interior. Yeah. yeah once so he's, he's dehydrated as a fuck. Now that he's drained his lizard, it's time to retop his lizard tank by stepping on a lizard that was scurrying up behind him. Oh, hey, ow. <laughs> the double-headed lizard that's right oh you thought this was tough it's tougher than you thought it's lizard eating tough yeah matt mad max we can call him mad max now he's officially <laughs> mad yeah he has some lizard jerky uh and suddenly he hears a ruckus a rumpus a crumpus from the distance it can be none other than those shitty, shitty war boys. The distant scent of diesel fuel and man stink wafts on the thin, dusty air. And he knows it is time to fly for high. Struth, it's time for me to get back in my, my v, me V8 interceptor and uh, ride away from these war boys. And while Max is talking directly to the camera, these uh, topless goons who are completely painted like uh, their torsos, arms, and faces, and bald heads are totally painted, totally Joker white, except for their eye sockets, which are a spooky, ooky black. They're like skeleton guys. But tell you what, that body paint does double as SPF 100, which yeah. is very important. Because they, of all the cancers, the most embarrassing one to get is skin cancer as a war boy. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's not the look. 
if you're a war boy to get a, a big freckle <laughs> a big bad freckle yeah now now a three pound freckle growing inside of you oh baby yeah that's 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 awesome. They're fine with that, but <laughs> that's like a merit badge for a war boy. <laughs> so, well, lucky for us, Mad Max has been through this kind of thing for three movies. He gets in his interceptor, he starts driving away, and a bad guy throws a bottle cap in front of the tire. <laughs> the interceptor immediately flips over and explodes. Oh, yeah! This is the single shortest pursuit shot of any Mad Max movie ever. They're like, hey, can we, we need to get from everything's fine to everything's fucked as fast as we possibly can. Yeah, so these these bad little boys, these, oh. these, these teenagers with nothing to do on a Friday night have bested Mad Max. They, they pull him into their ramshackle, like Frankensteinian car, and they, they bind him, and they say, oh, this one's full of bloody is we could use that in some way <laughs> waste not what not i eh? also they're occasionally not even australian no one knows what the war did to accents but mm -hmm. it's it's a mixed hellscape Whoa. smash cut to the citadel where it has a very very sophisticated medical thing they've already blood typed him and mm -hmm. sent him off to the hair cuttery slash tattooatorium Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know how they found out that Max is a universal donor, but their biomechanic, a.k.a. doctor, tattoos universal donor on his back. It's weird. We're going to skip the part where Max tries to escape because that does not advance the plot at all. This is a new era of muff movies, a slim, <laughs> trim, sleek barracuda of a podcast. We're a V8 interceptor of a podcast. That's right. That, that it gets captured right away. <laughs> um, the Citadel is essentially uh, a big mountain and uh, there's stuff inside of it it's I guess where the war, war boys go to convalesce uh, we we uh, yeah we see um, some some goons and hangers on you can just tell these people are evil and they are snapping on a G.I. Joe plastic torso onto the um, flabby and meatful oh. body of an older man. Yeah, bl bl blowing handfuls of powder onto his visibly melting flesh. <laughs> yeah. Trying to, like, stop the flow of back fat. <laughs> <laughs> I stop the fat and melt with you. <laughs> it, um, it's staunching powder. <laughs> uh, yes, this can only be... Oh, yeah, they, they affix a, a weird, uh, like, tooth filled breathing apparatus onto the man's mouth um which helps him darth vader himself into fighting shape <laughs> this can only be immortan joe the most immortan world leader the, the outback has ever seen but i gotta be honest mortanity is knock knock knocking on his door <laughs> <laughs> it gives him pause pondering his own mortanity <laughs> Um, yeah, so his freaks and weirdos, uh, put, put his face on and Immortan Joe, uh, strides to the edge of a rock opening. I don't know what you call it. It's a, it's an overlook in this massive, uh, mountain that he occupies, like some sort of dwarven lord. Yeah. He's wading through a sea of like extras from Jabba's palace to get there. The, yes! the room is just full of every sin of science that can happen it's very java core as the kids are saying. <laughs> it's giving java <laughs> immortan joe pulls up his uh, 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 uh rko style microphone and addresses the thousands upon thousands of filthy leathery weathered desiccated urchins that i guess make up the the inhabitants of the Citadel region? Yeah, I feel like they just mill around like sand fleas. Mm-hmm. That would be what they would be called if if the <clears throat> civilians had a name. Yeah, if they, if they weren't beneath being named. Yeah. Attention, sand fleas, <laughs> says Immortan <clears throat> Joe. <clears throat> I am Immortan Joe, 
the only way for you to reach any sort of peace in the afterlife in Valhalla is through me. Through mysterious means, I'm not going to explain how, but I am your ticket to a better life and a better death. And now are you ready for the sploosh sploosh? <laughs> We're ready for the sploosh sploosh. Get Just the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Martin Joe uh, does a can, I, can you smell what the rock's cooking type deal. Is it smell or hear? I don't know. I'm not a wrestling guy. Can you hear what the rock's cooking? I think you're supposed to smell what the rock's cooking, but it's a trick. Because if doesn't you start, he, yeah. That's, doesn't he you, do a thing where he's like, I can't hear you? Or that's there's, I don't know anything about, about pro wrestling, but I can tell you you're conflagrating three wrestlers. Oh, no. Smelling what the rock is cooking. <laughs> yeah. Hulk Hogan putting his hand to the ear to hear the audience. <laughs> yeah. And John Cena's You Can't See Me. <laughs> <laughs> I have oh. just used all of my wrestling knowledge in one shot. Mm. So hope that doesn't come up again, Rick. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hmm. Is that a wrestler, the guy who played Rick Dis? I don't think so, but he, he wrestles. <laughs> he, look, <laughs> he wrestles. He'll get he wrestles. You. He'll tussle. Yeah. <laughs> You get him. He's not above it. <laughs> Look at him. Look at the way he's dressed. <laughs> he's got a chin strap on. You think you're leaving the house dressed like that, mister? <laughs> no son of mine's going to wrestle. Now, uh, anyway. Uh, Morton Joe, knowing that he controls an underground aquifer that he can pump down onto the now canonized sand fleas. Mm -hmm. But he does so with a warning. Oh, Yes. Do not become addicted to water. <laughs> it'll it'll make you just thirstier for it. <laughs> Be brave. Don't drink the water that I'm pouring down upon you in the absolute least efficient manner we can. Because... Joe looks over to his uh, humanoid cactus advisor, <laughs> whose arms are crossed, and sagely nods his head. That's right. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> it's kept me going. Don't need it. Don't need it. <laughs> uh, Joe spins the wheels of water, and the water just splutes out loose, like from an open sewage pipe, uh, just down, down to Goblin Town, onto the sand fleas and the mud. If water is a precious resource, as it is in our world, uh, he is distributing it. Orly. And the, the, the movie, it is it is very brief, but in the opening shots before you see it, when it's just a big swirling cloud of rust, dust, and misery, they reference the water wars. Now there's wars for water. So oh, yeah. water is definitely scarce. Yeah. And this, he's just like, oh, but what if I just shot a three foot wide cannon of water and everyone below who also needs water holds up Half of a drinking glass. Yeah. Hey, hey, Morton Joe, I brought my colander to get to water. Oh, oh, I brought an old rag. I plan on just scooping all that mud into my mouth until I can get the moisture out. <laughs> oh, my, I, me and my mud mouth buddies, we know what's up. And I brought a hair dryer. To, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Drink and be merry, my sand fleas. One single uh, sand flea holds up a tiny palette for their watercolors. That's all. <laughs> it's the only way I can express myself. <laughs> oh, hooray, hooray. It's time to get into yellow and green. <laughs> I'm going to imagine a tree in the painting. Um, <clears throat> no imagination, says <laughs> Morton Joe. His hearing, like, you know, when yeah. one... When one sense degrades, others uh, fill in. And when your flesh he... is actively melting off of you, your ears get sharp. Yeah, he's just losing skin left and right. It's like a stretched out tube sock just falling down his ankle, but it's his ankle <laughs> falling down his ankle. <laughs> get me staple. Uh, it's, it's hard for the peasants, but you know who it's not hard for? Motherfucking Imperator Furiosa. Is this Warhammer 40K? It could be with a name like that. Um, yeah, it's none other than Charlize Theron. Charlize. Yeah. The only South African that I'm aware of in this movie doing an American accent in a 
in an intellectual property that's been established as highly Australian. I, I take exception to that. I'm like, no, just do South African. It's nobody fine. Nobody knows what happened to accents in the fall. <laughs> we see uh, Imperator Furiosa, like some sort of general in the army of a Morton Joe. It's Charlize Theron with, um, I, you know what? Didn't shave her head. Just buzzed it, yeah. which I feel is like not good enough. I mean, maybe the Imperators get to do that. Although the man Imperators we see later have bald heads. Yeah. And as a bald, I'm like, come on, is it so bad? She's got like a, a month's worth of growth, maybe? Yeah, it's a real, It's she looks like a boy, like a little boy. Mm -hmm. Like, like with a, a little, little hard ass boy with her, with her, I don't know, what is that, engine grease? What, what's the? Yeah, yeah. She's got like everyone, all the war boys wear like black grease paint oil on their eye sockets it, it is it also other foreheads or is that just i think imperators? that's just for imperators okay um, i don't i don't know fans write in <laughs> and let us let us know we've done uh, enough episodes of this that we could just be a mad max podcast at this point. <laughs> oh my god in in doing some like ad hoc research i discovered the mad max minute which is a podcast Every episode, which is at least 30 minutes long every episode, they analyze one minute of Fury Road. And I think that they also do have done the other Mad Max movies. It's like minute Ooh. by minute, which honestly, not a bad way to process Fury Road because no. so much happens. <clears throat> yeah, you don't worry. You we we're going to save you from that. You're not going to have to process all that because we are cutting through it for you. We've done a poor job of that so far, but yeah. we're going to, I swear to God, at the ending, we're just going to fly right from well, act two to the end. There's a lot of front heavy, like, who are the players? What's going on? And it, it, it just, it never, like the, the Jabba-esque nature of the Citadel. Jabba Core. The Jabba Core Citadel cannot be overstated because it, the camera just keeps going through like the IT department, the <laughs> kitchens the 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 mail room and everyone's like squeaks got me bawa shunki te <laughs> yeah a lot of topless men a lot of grossness and uh a morton joe's other son is there rictus rictus erectus he for a movie that has tom hardy in it playing a tough guy and a bad guy who has a breathing apparatus and like big fake muscles Rictus Erectus is the bane of this movie. He is. He's a big hunk of muscle man, just abs and arms, bald head, angry all the time, with Inex a weird little cannula uh, for oxygen up his nose. Yeah, inexplicable chin strap that's like semi-transparent. It grosses me out. Yeah, because, you know, he's not he's not washing under that. Mm. Mm -mm. Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how you get addicted to water. That's how they get you. <laughs> yeah. Putting like a, a ripped apart condom over your face every morning. But from from the Java's gallery of the difficult to look upon. Did, we see but... Imperator Furiosa look up at Immortan Joe. She has a mischievous sparkle in her eye that normally isn't there. What what is she plotting something? Joe thinks to himself. Yeah, <laughs> says the cactus advisor, but it's too late. Uh, Furiosa has driven off in the war rig, her, which her, is her left arm, which is mechanical, but also said shit pops up and goes, we really doing this, boss? <laughs> yeah, shut up, lefty. <laughs> ah, shucks. <laughs> Go tell your story walking. <laughs> yeah, uh, the war rig is being driven by Furiosa. It is. Once again, every car we, we talk about in this movie is going to be like a hodgepodge assemblage of ad hoc m mutated car parts welded together in the weirdest way possible. So even though it's like kind of a tanker truck, it's actually also like a, a crazy clown car as the cab and then a, a big pressurized tank of something with wheels that have, like, metal spikes blossoming out of them in sort of a flowery-looking way. It's, yeah. And then a pod of gas as a trailer behind that big pressurized tank. 
It's great. It is. It is a. It is a giant rolling death delivery slash fuel delivery vehicle. Yeah, honestly, it's more of like a fuel tanker than it is like a, a moving battle platform. A dead reckoning to all the zombie movie fans out there. <laughs> or, uh, but it does have a cow catcher, like, yeah, like, like many Like maximum war overdrive, except for instead of a giant goblin head, it's... Goblin head. <laughs> Red Yoda. <laughs> In bed with a goblin. Ah, <laughs> uh, legendary. He got a free t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so Furiosa is driving this tanker. She will deliver the water and vegetables <laughs> to Gas Town in exchange for gas and bullets from Bullet Town and candy from Candy Town. <laughs> <laughs> and funk. You know where that goes, huh? <laughs> Lip Sync has their very own enclave. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Furiosa is, uh, uh, escorted by war boys who are driving motorcycles that have long poles on them, like skulls for, uh, handlebars. The tires are made out of screaming weasels. It's just <laughs> <laughs> style over substance, really. It, it is, it is, it is a, which is what makes it so fun to look at, but it is an entire hyper armed convoy to drive through what is a empty wasteland. Yeah. For something called the Fury Road, there's very little going on. It is a straight shot. A to B. It's yeah. Citadel, Bullet Town. Citadel, yeah. Funky Town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no Barter Town in this movie. No Barter Town, which is, I think, an opportunity Alarming. missed. Where is the produce? Furiosa's <laughs> delivering produce. Yeah. Where is that? I assume it's in the tanker. <laughs> Under pressure? Is it like a... I mean... Is it an Instant Pot? Is it, are they like <laughs> delivering hot cabbage? It's just V8. <laughs> <laughs> when they're like, or the cult of V8, they're talking about the vegetable juice. There's, the whole scene plays out again in uh, Bullet Town, except for it's just three giant pipes and V8 floods out over their version <laughs> of sand fleas or whatever they've got. <laughs> Do not become addicted to the <laughs> delicious tomato juice, even though it does contain a day's worth of your vegetable intake. The niacin alone will drive you mad. <laughs> you will resent its absence, and honestly, V8 Splash, while tasty, does not have the nutritional bite to it. There's no substitute. Low sodium V8, though, fuck that, am I right? Huh? <laughs> Is this thing on? Tink, tink, tink. Half <laughs> amount of feedback. That's Morton Joe, the leader of Bullet Town. <laughs> Smash cut two. Back up at the Citadel. Joe, he smells something a little strange. He turns to Corpus Colossus, his brother, who's looking through the spyglass in it's his, his fox son, wing. Oh, his son. Um, yeah, <laughs> looking through, just following the progression of Furiosa's convoy because they don't have GPS. They barely have P. <laughs> and yeah, Corpus is like, hey, boss, are they, are they supposed to not be going to the place we thought they were going to? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> this can only mean one thing. Of course, Immortan Joe, I, I don't know how he knows this because he sees Furiosa take a hard right off the road not headed towards Bullet Town or Gun Central or anything um, he knows something's fucked up and he needs to check on his most prized possession yeah, he first checks six women <laughs> six women he checks with his right hand man who has both right and left hand just really digging into those nipples and says does this seem normal to you and he's like <laughs> oh and he's like, you know what? <laughs> Never mind. I've got to go check on my wives. Yeah. My wives. <laughs> Immortan Joe runs through a little hydroponic farm. He approaches a vault door. Gobbets, set in gobbets of back fat falling off him as he trots through. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that back fat fever. <laughs> back fat fever. Um, 
Right. We see a Morton Joe tumbling, scrumbling, fumbling with that uh, vault door. Fortunately, there's absolutely no combination to this vault mm-hmm. door. It's just it's basically the hatch of a submarine. He just spins that wheel and it opens and he steps into a, a more well-appointed area of the Citadel than we have seen before. In fact, there's lots of books strewn about, which is crazy. Because, like, who reads in Mad Max? They don't even read in Star Wars. And in stark uh, relief against all these learned books on the walls, why someone has a graffitied this, this, this blessed, silent place. Where my ladies at, he calls. Where the girls at, yeah. Uh, but in guano, in the stark white of the War Boys uh, SPF 100 body paint, he sees scrawled across the floor... Who ended the world? We we are we what are it, we are girl? not your things. Hillary twenty sixteen. All, all, <laughs> all the single ladies. I think it's all the single lieties. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and while a Morton Joe is screaming about this, he finds that it is not an empty room. There's still Mm-mm. one ripe young lady left. I'm stupid. <laughs> Hey, where, where are you going there, Joe? Hey there, Joe. I'm Miss Giddy. Giddy up, big boy. <laughs> Who, come, come, come here. Who has, a, <laughs> has, has like a 20-foot drop on him with a shotgun that she yep. has no intention of using whatsoever. No. It's more of a uh, an a accent to her ensemble. Yeah. Uh, She's pointing a shotgun at him. Uh, Miss Giddy, by the way, though Dave described her as young, <laughs> is not is, is the uh, the old school marm of uh, the brides of Immortan Joe, and she says, uh, "Women aren't objects. You can't own a human being." And Joe just frumples up straight into the muzzle of that shotgun, which she fails to discharge yeah. and punts it up towards the ceiling. Tell me where they went. Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hmm, should have thought this through. <laughs> Man, I was I knew I picked this gun up for a reason. <laughs> this thing shoots. <laughs> I thought it was a wand. I thought it was a dowsing rod. <laughs> Smash cut from the bride vault to the citadel again. We see Igmortis Joe get on his uh, Joe phone and screech out over the intercom. Attention all war boys. Form a convoy to retrieve my stolen brides. We zoom in to the sick cavern of all the crumpled and corrupted war boys who are too sick to ride. And all of their good-looking, handsome, well-bodied friends are rushing past them, going off to war. They're so excited. It's they're war. singing. We're going to war. Goddamn <laughs> bugs. They kill Buenos Aires, Johnny. We're going. <laughs> Now there's a movie we should muff. Yeah, that's true. We see a young, spry Nicholas Holt pretending to be a sick war boy. I don't buy it. No, he's faking. He's fucking, he's fit as fuck. He's vital. He's, he's fine. It's hard to tell whether he's pale because everyone's all, you know, mimed up. Yeah, and his lips are chapped to shit. Yeah. It took me a while to realize that was a it's choice. It's Australia. Yeah. It's a choice. Yeah, they don't have any of that. What was it? Uh, the... Book of Burt's Book of Eli beeswax. cat grease to put on their lips in that in this version of the apocalypse. Mm, I don't recall that, but I've only seen Book of Eli once. Oh well, you're good. Yeah, he had a little um, tin of cat grease because he killed a cat and ate it. See a little tin of cat grease for his lips. Ugh. Yeah. Like I said, you're good. <laughs> you don't need yeah. to. You don't need to back the truck up on that one. Speaking of backing the truck up, <laughs> the War Boys in the cult of V8. Uh, grab steering wheels from this big platform of steering wheels because, like, I guess, I don't know, maybe car thievery is an issue at the Citadel, so they have to remove the steering wheel. Yeah, they, there's it's, nobody has, uh, what's it called? The, the, the club. The club. That's it. <laughs> Morning, protected by Viper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Just what, echoing through the Citadel. <laughs> what I wouldn't give to see a Viper car protection commercial again with that, like, Mid '90s CGI Viper rising up from under a car to scare a car thief. <laughs> I had a club when I was in high school oh, yeah. across my steering wheel. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like if someone breaks into my car, they're going to be slightly inconvenient. Did you use it regularly? Yeah. It just seems like it <laughs> seems like something I would like get put in my car, use it three times, and be like, "Yeah, that's work." Yeah, I wonder whatever happened to that club. Stole one. It's probably. Uh, yeah, someone just stole the <laughs> club. A, a war boy named Slit, because uh, it. <laughs> Because the side of his mouth is slit like a Joker situation. Uh, grabs up a sweet-looking skull-centered steering wheel, holds it aloft, yells, at last, my right arm is complete again, and then runs past a sickly war boy who grabs him. He says, hey, how by... did you get those scars? And he said, no time! <laughs> Immortan Joe's been traitored! Uh, in a, yeah, by the way, there's a war boy who stops and screams at Nicholas Hulk. Like the full news report. <laughs> yeah, the newsy war boy. <laughs> yeah, like leaving pronouns and everything out. Like, traitors, Morton Joe, Stop. war brides. Must go. Yeah. Stop. Need more <laughs> drivers. Stop. Um, <clears throat> so, this sick war boy who we've really been building up is named Nux, played by Nicholas Holt, a.k.a. the kid from About a Boy. Now all grown up. A.k.a. A- 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 uh, we Cyclops. Well... Little Cyclops. Little oh, wee Cyclops. Uh, for me? No, he was the Beast. Was beast. he the Beast? Oh. He's Beast. Uh, Cyclops is my man, James Marston. Oh, okay. The, who plays a cuck in everything he stars in. <laughs> it was a different jawline. My mistake. God, God bless him. I love James Marston. Um, really just because of Westworld. But, yeah, I feel like he doesn't He doesn't ever play a, someone who wins. <laughs> just doesn't work out for Jimmy Marsden. Yeah. I, I haven't seen Sonic or Sonic 2. I'm going to so tell you, wins at the nor end. have I, but I, I strongly suspect he's still waiting to post that win. <laughs> Sonic <laughs> Sonic sleeps with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> we were friends and we took a road trip. <laughs> Gotta go fast. <laughs> oh, they're making a sequel and you know Tails. It's just going to make that worse. Now I'm thinking about if there's anyone to catch in bed with your spouse, Sonic the Hedgehog is an awful one because you're never catching him. Knuckles. <laughs> Knuckles would be worse. Knuckles, is just... <laughs> Knuckles <clears throat> isn't even fast. He'd just glare at you and walk away and yeah. you'd be like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> he'd, he'd fake punch at you and you'd flinch. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's why I fought and fought because it's Idris Elba. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. I'm fighting Knuckles in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh ticker tape let's let's nux know everything that's going on and nux is like well nap t- nap time is over yeah so nux me slit your gunner is gonna drive the car today because you're sick ha 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 nux he ain't having that Mm-mm. even though he's he's uh reached terminal freak out he <laughs> He gets real close to Slit, and he gives him a fucking Australian handshake, which is a headbutt right in the head. Now, I noticed something. Uh, uh, Fury Roadheads are going to uh, remember this. There's something weird where Nux headbutts Slit, and the screen flashes white. Like, there's, like, a couple of frames that are just all white, like, pa, And then Slit falls down on the ground. And, I mean, that's a very deliberate choice. And I think something happened where, like, maybe Nicholas Holt, like, pulled the headbutt too soon and, you know, oh. didn't want to hurt the other actor. And they're like, oh, well, we thought that we had it, sucked. but we didn't. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of jarring, like, how cartoon it becomes for just a moment. Maybe we were meant to sympathize with Slit. Um, it is, it's not a, it's not an idea that they carry through the movie, but maybe early times there was like a little red herring, emotionally speaking. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm team slit. <laughs> <laughs> now there's the yeah, I was going to say. Red Yoda, r- team slit. <laughs> right after Australian handshake and then just a, a diagram of a... <laughs> team slit. <laughs> anyway. Slit gets up. He's fucking his danders up. He's ready to fight. And then Nux says, Oh, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die historic on the Fury Road. And Slit, you know, game recognized game. Yeah. He, he does kind of like a big hulking over him, like two dogs snarling. And then he's like, Oh, you're right. At that point, Nux doesn't know that 
the whole thing is that Furiosa didn't take the Fury Road. No. So he's gonna die historic on a dirt path. Not even a path, just some dirt. Just dirt. I mean these guys. Yeah. They just they're they're in love with dying. <laughs> they were doing it in Texas. Only nine <laughs> skids over. Yeah, I was gonna like, say that was a good cut. <laughs> the butthole surfers. <laughs> yeah. <that one? laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> um uh, uh, nearly smash cut. We're almost there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, suddenly, the biomechanic Doc Sloppy Hands uh, fumbles his way in, sque- squeaking, sliding about on a trail of blood and femurs. Uh, Wait a minute! You're too sick to go out there driving. Uh, you're connected to this blood bag, this universal donor, and he points up at a gibbet. Uh, and hanging up there in the cage is Mad Max Rakatansky himself, who's just connected to an IV being used as a blood supply for this sick war boy. Which you would think would make him be in really rough shape, but this is the best he's looked throughout the entire movie so far. This is peak Max. He's got a haircut, like, he's got some sweet new ink. Yeah, it's like um, like the Hollywood heartthrobs. You, you get all <laughs> morty, you get all pumped up at the gym, and then you dehydrate for 36 hours before filming yeah. and you lose 10 pounds of water weight, you look shredded. That's how he does it. That's, what, that's how Max that's, does hey, it. Hey, hey, Max, what's your secret? I spit a lot. <laughs> I'm so dehydrated, my piss comes out like yellow cable. <laughs> anyway, uh, hey, hey, Nux, hey, Nux, says Slit. Why don't you go ahead and bring the blood bag with us? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> they grab Mad Max and they strap him to the front of the car. And and the thing is, is like, again, <laughs> we're in a huge hurry. Furiosa, she stole the bride. She stole the war rig. We've got to hurry. Good news. All of our vehicles are set up to have a gibbet just mounted right to the front. It takes no additional time. Mm-mm. Get him up there. Run the tube through a chain. We've done this before. You're mm-hmm. not the first one that needs blood while we pursue our enemies. It takes yeah. seconds. Using For these guys, using a human being as a blood supply on the front of your car is basically plugging an aux cable into your car <laughs> so you can play songs from your phone. Yes. That's how easy it is for these people. Smash cut. Oh, finally. Two, thank God. I'm starting to get sore. Planet Arrakis. The dusty... <laughs> roadless world we see furiosa's convoy driving off road um and uh, hey i bet you guys were worried uh in this post-apocalyptic wasteland what happened to the russians well good fortune smiles again because there are russian psychos <laughs> loose in the desert the buzzards people who drive spiky vehicles spot furiosa and her furious uh, circus caravan driving through their territory. Drive fast, we make stab. We cover the whole vehicle in stab. Uh, Furiosa speaking over the CB radio to them. Uh, can't hear you. Sorry. Um, hel- uh, hel- hey, we're fine. Everything's fine. How are you? We we'll make <laughs> Boring stab. conversation anyway. She shoots the CB. <laughs> <laughs> we got company, fellas. Uh, I will say uh, this. At, at that point, she does notify her escort because the escorts also, uh, they don't know that they, that she's doing them dirty. They're like, oh, Furiosa, tell us what we're doing. She's like, how about you fuck off, eh? But one of my favorite parts of this entire film, they fucking nailed the sound of that truck horn. <laughs> it is amazing. And You like the horn? I do like the horn. <laughs> And Furiosa's completely autonomous but attached mechanical hands like, Hey, boss, can I ring the horn? Can I ring the horn? She gives it a slow nod. Quack, quack. Little toot, toot. <laughs> and all the war boys know it's on. It's fang time, she tells them. And they they fang out from the bang out. <laughs> the, the war boys drive alongside those Russian spiky hedgehog dune buggies, and they start throwing their explosive tip javelons and sort of blowing some of them up sometimes. Yeah, it's a it's a mixed bag. Yeah, guys, you got to understand. Most of this movie is just cars blowing up other cars. Yes, 
it is just people, bodies hitting sand, cars blowing up, fires burning uncontrollably, then quite controllably, <laughs> then out. Yeah. Incredible danger, then no danger. <laughs> um, yeah, and those, those Russians, they're given just as good as they get. One of the war boys is shot in the face with a crossbow. Oh, it, it, oh. it comes out the back. Yeah, so you know he's done. Mm -hmm. D-U-N. He turns to his um, fellow convoy members. Witness me, brothers! And uh, he sprays some chrome spray paint on his teeth and mouth. I like to believe that this chrome thing is a drug yeah. that makes them, like, battle frenzied. They never explicitly say that, but that's what I choose to believe. Yeah, I 100% I agree with that. I mean, I don't know if it's a non-toxic cake decoration kind of thing. <laughs> that they just, like, I don't know, they found it, and they didn't know what else to do with it, so they incorporated I'm all out of dragees! <laughs> <laughs> they used those for ammunition years ago. <laughs> yeah. Before the bullet farm was up and running, it was just slingshots and dragees. A lot of lost eyes. Yeah, that was before they lost Pastry Town. <laughs> <laughs> Cake boss. Cake boss. So, yeah, this is, we are beginning to learn, this is the ritual of the suicide culture of the war boys. They spray themselves in the mouth with chrome spray paint. They yell, witness me, and then they fucking do something fatal. And this guy, Molosov or something, uh, is no different. He jumps in slow motion off the back of the war rig, uh, Morty and he boom stick just, in each hand. Yeah, he just um, uh, 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 mud veins his way right, right into that Russian war buggy and explodes them and himself uh, and a, a, any memory of who he was because we forget him two seconds later. Yeah, and the last last thought that went through the Russians head is, yeah, but he gets stabbed. <laughs> you're going to get stabbed you, you cannot deny you he did get stabbed I got you it works it's spike work he gets stabbed we, <laughs> we, we technically get you first so. <laughs> just uh, for those of you at home keeping score He's, I give you draw at best but <laughs> uh, technically we get him we did it <laughs> um, smash cut uh, two uh, just the start of the dusty trail that uh, Curiosa has left behind her. <laughs> um, and we see Immortan Joe and the War Boys turning off the Fury Road into the off-road wastelands. Um, they are giving chase, and the camera zooms out, and we see there's basically a dirt armada of cars, um, buggies, trucks, uh, douchebag unicycles that tech bros have. Oh, the Tesla Cybertruck oh, is there too. Absolutely it is. Thank God. And Mad Max's V8 Interceptor has been appropriated by these fucking hoodlums and is, you know, is has been spray painted. It, it's reminiscent of Short Circuit when the gang gets Johnny Five and puts a mohawk on him. <laughs> Los Locos. Because the butthole server's reference wasn't old enough. <laughs> yeah, just in case you needed to take it back to 1987. But it's, yeah, it's, it, it like like the War Boys, the Interceptor is now shiny and chromed out. They've, they've made it, uh, and, and Max is, you know, it's hard for him to emote that as he is just festooning the front of a war car, but he's pissed. He knows that's oh. his ride. And I forgot to mention... Um, the War Boys put a spiky trident mask on Mad Max's head. It's like um, it's it's locked to his face, sort of chastity belt style. It's a man it's like muzzle. A, a man muzzle, but it's got a lot of holes in it. Yeah. So he can breathe. It's just there to really bother his nose. Yep. Like if they want to, they can break his nose at any point by just tapping it. And there's no biting. He's, it's, it's, he's, uh, I, th yeah. I think he bit a war boy mm. and you know what? Tastefully left off camera. Smart move, Mr. Miller. Yeah. And <laughs> when you do that, both of you get a disease. Yeah, that, nobody wins. War boy gives just as good as he gets. I didn't realize Mad Max was a biter. <laughs> Says the Ryan Reynolds war boy. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, if you watch it with the subtitles on, there's all sorts of shit that pr probably Tom Hardy didn't say. Like, they took my blood, what else can they take from me? My car. Yeah. Uh, confound us. See, he's doing Harry Potter spells or something. Yeah, and if, yeah, if you're, if, yeah, without the subtitles, which I also watched with that on, but it's just like, because it's just all, you know, the, Every, it's nothing but wonderful chaos sounds everywhere. Yeah. So um, a Morton Joe, he's pulling up the rear. They're sniffing the tailpipes of what's the left of these buzzards, taking them off. But a Morton Joe, he's he's pulled out all the stops. He's got his his entire posse with him, including uh, the, the Doof Warrior. Uh, what's the Doof Warrior like, Dave? <laughs> He's, he's the single most iconic person in this entire movie, which doesn't make a lot of sense unless you've seen him. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, he is. He's a man in red pajamas from 1860. Yeah. Um, and his job is to play a very dangerous guitar and so inspire uh, those around him. Honestly, much like the giant water tank, this seems like a horrible waste of resources in a place where there aren't a lot of resources. Yes, the Doof Warrior is strapped to a rig that has like a full stadium speaker setup. He's like the the drum and fife of the post apocalypse. There's like War Boys playing giant uh, uh, Kodo. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, Kodo, Kodo drums. Uh, and then on the other side, the flip side is the Doof Warrior playing a one man metal solo. And there's like jets of flame shooting out of his guitar. And he's wearing a scary, like, mouth mask, like the, the, the mouth of Sauron or something. It's as though his head was accelerated, so much like a Morton <laughs> Joe's back, the flesh started to just flow back, but it's just a mask. Whereas Morton Joe, that's his real back. <laughs> yeah. He's got a whole skin retention shit husk that he has to wear. <laughs> Doof Warrior is fake in the funk, but <laughs> Morton Joe is the OG. It's an homage. My skin was falling off before it was cool. <laughs> to his sloppage. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> anyway, the bad guys are giving chase. Uh, they're sh picking off the Russian war cars. Bush left boy! And, right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Furiosa observes this through her rearview mirror. A lot of glass and mirrors are still intact in this world, which is bizarre. I mean, honestly, even even if it was a pristine truck when they started, at seven minutes into this drive, I can't believe there's any glass still intact on anything. Yeah, there's a lot of explosions happening. Um, Furiosa sees uh, the Coriolis storm, feared by all, including the sandworms on this planet, <laughs> and drives her convoy straight into it. This is like, if this were a disaster movie, this would be the end storm. It's like bright red yeah. lightnings coming out of it. There are multiple tornadoes just like slam dancing in the middle of it. Or it's, <laughs> yeah, it's either the thing at the end or the beginning of like a day after tomorrow kind of movie where they're mm. like, Oh, what happened to Las Vegas? Six seconds of this. And you're like, Oh, so that's all gone now. Yeah. And furious is like, yeah, we can body this. Yeah. She drives right into it. And yeah, Every war boy that pursues is sucked up and physically shucked. <laughs> <laughs> All their corn is removed and scattered to the yeah. desert. Yeah. Um, except for one vehicle, which is remarkably uh, resilient. Uh, it, it has a storm ward cast over it, and that's little old Nux's car, the sick war boy using Mad Max as a hood ornament. He drives forth into the storm. A uh, slit falls off the back and loses a boot. Well, we might see him in the future, maybe. <laughs> and Nux is like, this is my moment. We see him um, uncork all the sea strainers on this submarine. Yeah. and He's got a big thing sea... of Diet Coke and a giant thing that's just labeled Mentos. And he is fucking ready to detonate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his the cab of his car is filling with flammable liquid. Um, he spray paints his mouth and he screams, Witness me, blood bag! Witness me! Uh, Max is uh, suddenly 
aware of what's about to go down, and he ain't having that. Up till now, he was pretty sanguine about things. <laughs> <laughs> but no, now we've gone too far. He needs to he needs to get involved. Max punches out the rear window, Bane style. And just as Nux is about to drop his lit road flare into the gasoline-filled cab, turning his car into a giant bomb, which I assume he's going to detonate in front of Furiosa's rig. Yeah, I think that's the... Let's just establish that, yeah. Max grabs the flare and chucks it out the window. Not today, motherfucker, says Max. Seconds before Furiosa fucking butt fucks their (laughs) car into tomorrow. Break break checks the nuts off these guys. (laughs) Yeah, she she somehow uh, gains incredible speed and just plows Nux's vehicle apart. It it explodes in a baptism of car parts, and uh, we see a CGI Nux and Mad Max fly ass over heels <laughs> into the into the powder. Yeah, and thank God the the desert sand has been fluffed by all the uh, air pressure changes because they just and the st- tiny teddy bears that live in that store. <laughs> They the, just the snuggle bears. They just rise up and pull them in the sand. You're coming with us. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight we feast. <laughs> Smash cut. And honestly, this like frame, this picture, whatever, and, and sequence, I think is some of the like coolest stuff in the movie. You see just like what appears to be this weird sandy landscape. Like perhaps a a dune, desert hill, and it slowly starts to pull apart as he realizes it's just like an extreme close-up of Mad Max who is lying face down in the sand. And he he unburies himself, standing up from the sand in slow motion and shakes that filthy sand from off of him. Also, he has weird hallucinogenic flashbacks of like, I don't know. I don't even know... What it's establishing. This is what makes him Mad Max, because what he just survived was a hell-on-earth fever dream that should have been the only thing that his mind reaches for whenever it has to terrify itself. But it's like, no, 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 I got this other thing already. (laughs) (laughs) That makes less sense than the real hell that you just witnessed. Yeah. He, He flashes back to Nam... And then then back into his current situation. Max looks over. He sees that he's miraculously survived both the storm and the car crash. And he looks over at the ruined vehicle. um, And he sees that he's still chained uh, with his, like, um, IV wound through the chain. Still pumping blood into that shiftless vagabond that one-eyed wanderer. Who was about to squander the blood gift he's been giving him all day. Just slap him in the face like, oh, wanted to live longer? No thanks. We're, yeah. we're going to burn instead. Yeah, Me- actually, now that you mention it, that's bullshit. You know what, what it is? What an ingrate. Mediocre. Like, ah, yes. One of my favorite things from this movie that I still mutter to myself whenever I screw something up. Max sees the unconscious body of Nux. He grabs his hand up, shakes it around, and tries to free himself from this manacle. Max is chained to Nux through these difficult-to-break shackles. Um, he can't pull the hand loose from Nux's uh, wristband, and so he tries to start chewing it off yeah. through his weird uh, ooky spooky mask, and, and, which I appreciate. And I'd like to believe that even in Max's own mind, it was even money. Am I going for the glove or the wrist? Am I just trying to take the whole hand? Am I just am I biting off fingers or am I just trying to bite off the, the wrist strap? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Max, he realizes what must be done. And he shoulders up a, the door of the car. He shoulders up an unconscious Knox. And then he proceeds to walk without rhythm. <laughs> in the direction of the uh, of the truck, because he... yeah, the the war rig yeah. is stopped. Yeah, what? It's not far ahead. He can just make it out on the horizon. So, honestly, like logistically, I don't understand why the war rig has stopped. Like we see the brides are out there washing. Yeah, that's just it. They were like, guys, it's been a day. I know there's not a ton of water, but I know what we should do with the very limited amount of water we have on this truck. 
I don't understand that. Like the, the storm has passed. So their pursuers can re-engage the pursuit. Yeah. They need to fucking run. Mm-mm. But they're like, nah. Mm-mm. Everyone okay. needs to just just get some of that dust off of them so that new dust can get on them. <laughs> new dust city. So Max, hauling Nux over his shoulder like a Jansport backpack, spots, is this a mirage? No. It's the six brides of Immortan Joe, the legendary brides, um, all of them fashion models, mm-hmm. uh, which seems highly unlikely in this world, um, this world of mutants and, and schloobs and gloobs. <laughs> um, and they're just shooting water from a hose all over each other, laughing, giggling. It's the Zoolander gasoline scene all over again. Honestly, a gasoline fight would make more sense in Mad Max. <laughs> You're right. And I think even even Max, who's who's got a shotgun, but he knows it doesn't work. Oh, that's right. He tried to shoot Nux's arm off, but his shotgun misfired. Yeah. So he's got a, a prop shotgun. Yeah, and he these girls a not gun. The girls are having so much fun giggling and hosing each other off that they <laughs> they do not notice his approach from what had to be at least two miles away <laughs> in a straight line, flat desert. No to one be sees fair, him. He was walking without rhythm. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So Immortan Joe's brides uh, suddenly see Max and he's pointing a shotgun right at their fucking leader. Angharad, the splendid. Yeah. I don't Who's a, a, a beautiful willowy supermodel who's incredibly pregnant she like she's about to give birth um she, and so and it's she's also got some weird keloid scars on her face to say like hey one time i i, I fought a cheese grater yeah uh according to scripture she is a, a immortan joe's favorite and uh max is pointing a shotgun right at her furiosa suddenly notices uh-oh the jig is up max is pointing a gun at these nice ladies and Max is looking with just like he's looking at this mud puddle that the brides are creating by hosing each other off and looking at that mud. And in front of his his vision, it turns into a succulent chicken <laughs> wing. <laughs> he licks his lips. <laughs> the, the woman walking up to him has become a steak with a human head. Give me some of that water. Uh, what I'm doing is actually more lines than Max has. Yeah. I think he's just like, order, big. And I, I have to believe it was a deliberate choice to leave the faucet running this whole time. It it yeah. builds an uneasiness. <laughs> yes, absolutely. This movie, it, it, like, Mad Max, interesting world, very stylized, but, like, has this essential quality where they're like, we are down and out, we have nothing but we're going to make a guitar with a flamethrower in it because we don't give a fuck about wasting gas. We don't give a fuck about wasting water. Like, all this movie needs is somebody to be, like, driving a motorcycle with a salad bar driving <laughs> behind it and just throwing hard-boiled eggs into the dirt. <laughs> it is. It is, it is uh, a... A nation of survivors, apocalyptic survivors, who have decided it is all about form. Function yeah, they, can eat it. They disdain prudence. <laughs> <laughs> they worship waste. It is the wasteland. So. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, Max, in what I feel is a very ADR uh, dialogue situation, <laughs> um, points his gun at them and... Angharad, the, the, the splendid one, um, very carefully, gingerly carries that water hose over to him. He snatches it out of her clutches. And this, this part also makes me uncomfortable. He just starts fucking reaming his throat. With like when you spray a hose at a dog and it just goes... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like... He is like gremlins the new batching himself up with water as some of those gremlins did with soft serve just you can see his belly swelling with it um 
It made me a little uncomfortable until I watched it a second time and saw that Tom Hardy is hitting the mask a lot. So it's not just like continuous fire hose of water straight into his esophagus. But Max is a thirsty boy. <laughs> he is. He's lost yeah. a lot of blood, and uh, that'll that'll get you. He's he's been reverse hydrating, which is dehydrating. <laughs> Julian have a yes. word for that too. I kind of wonder if this whole part was like someone was like, "What well, doesn't make sense? Max would be so weak from blood loss. Like we gotta have a scene where he drinks a lot, you know? Like it doesn't make sense to me that this is a part. Yeah. Like why? How does this have anything to do with anything? It's it's like it's like video game health. Yeah, here's some water. You're good. I know you got shot yeah. twice, but you're fine now. Yeah, this is the cut scene where it like explains how your hero who just survived the, the demolition derby is ready for a new mission. Anyway. While while <laughs> Max is just so busy just horking down that water, just <laughs> just making love to that hose, Furiosa realizes his eyes are not on the prize. And she takes this opportunity to lay into him like a linebacker. She closes mm-hmm. the distance, and then it then the the fight is on. Yeah, this is a good fight. Furiosa catches Max around the midriff and tackles him to the ground and starts pummeling him with bolt cutters. Um, Max grabs a door, <laughs> the door that's like like a an ornament on the chain between him and Nux. And <laughs> he starts... Charm. Yeah. He starts fending off Furiosa's vicious attacks using the door as an ad hoc shield. Furiosa gets the shotgun away from him uh, and shoots, or, or tries to shoot, but she didn't understand. It was just a comedy shotgun. It can't shoot. Max punches it out of her hand. <laughs> just... <laughs> Thank you. Way better. Yeah. <laughs> and Furiosa pulls out a Glock and tries to shoot it at Max, but he pulls the uh, bullet clip out of it and throws it at Nux, who grabs it, but is immediately set upon by vicious Joe Brides, who pull him backwards. Uh, Furiosa has one shot in the clip, or one shot in the gun, the chamber, and misses Max uh, just by a, a scooch, a scotch, a roach, and we hear the telltale high-pitched ringing of what it's like to get a gun fired near your ear, which will happen to him again later in the movie. Yeah, his ears take a real beating. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story short, Max wins the fight and gets that Glock pointed at Furiosa. Okay. Truce. They agree. (laughs) And Max climbs into the cab of the war rig. Sniff you jerks later and just drives away and... Uh-oh. Hold up. My truck don't go. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> It's a real Millennium Falcon hyperdrive in <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. Uh, little did Mad Max know, Furiosa built in a kill switch into the car. They don't have the I... club. It's been established. <laughs> they got to do whatever they can to protect their wheels. Yeah, so you can only drive the war rig, I don't know, 40 feet? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it is sort of a... Uh... <laughs> Peter Lorre? <laughs> it is... Uh... It is sort of a kill switch. Hey, a really Giger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotcha. It's H.R. Giger. So, sorry. Sorry, your war rig is shut down. There's a kill switch, you idiot. Um, by the way, Max knocked Nux out. Nux is lying in the dirt. Oh, yeah. And they, 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 they cut the cable. He still has his trident face, and he's still licking driplets of water off of it. But he's no longer attached to his uh, door charm or his Nux. Who, his blood, bro. Who, I, I just, it just occurred to me, he probably could have threaded Nux through the window on that door. But yeah. no time. No time. No time. So <laughs> Max realizes that he's not getting anywhere without the cooperation of these people. Furiosa climbs into the window. Good day. <laughs> My name's Furiosa. I don't know your name, but look, if you want to get killed by a Immortan Joe in his war boys, Good night, they're sunshine. like, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> them's fighting words. They're like five minutes behind us. You, um, when you, by the way, when you fought with me, you accidentally wounded Angharad the Splendid, and that's his favorite bride. So he's going to totally fuck you up. 
unless you join us and become part of our fun, fun toot toot convoy. Also, I bet you'd like that face trident off of you. We have a way of removing that. And that's just the, the little bargaining chip that sets Max over the edge. He can't resist. That's just his... what I was hoping to hear. Yeah, so Max scoots over in a shotgun, and Furiosa passes him a file? Yep, she, she gives him a file, and then it starts off what I know was very brief, but it feels like ten minutes of shaking down the inside of the cab of the truck. Of Oh, yeah. <clears throat> just guns, 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 guns. Yeah, Warbrides get in, they they get back on the road, and Max disarms all the booby traps in this car. Now remember, he had like a snake trap in his car when that desert pervert came to try to get him. <laughs> yeah, there was, there's, there's traps on traps in traps. Mm-hmm. He finds a gun hidden in another gun. <laughs> Uh, but you know what? They, these are, this is an, un, an uneasy alliance, but it seems that our heroes have finally linked up. Little do they know, Mad Nux has uh, awakened and is running after their war rig and sneaks in to the secret cat door built into the back of the war rig. Is he going to fuck shit up? Uh, maybe. That's his plan. He's going to Nux it up. Smash cut. The canyon. Slowly, slowly, Furiosa drives that rig into the canyon of the sand people. And Mad Max says, oh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't fancy a drive through that canyon. It's a bad idea. And she says, you shut your fucking noise, you. <laughs> <laughs> Up on the canyon uh, cliffs, we see guys who are Ooh, dressed like... Exactly. The Star Wars sand people with dreadlocks. These can only be the rock riders. A a gag of wicked men who ride BMX bikes through the canyon. Could not, and I have to make it clear, these are not the buzzards. These are a different set of motorcycle-based tribe that Mm -hmm. they they live around this. They, They predate the canyon. Yeah. Every group in Mad Max has its own stylistic... Uh, quality <laughs> that these guys are like, you know what? Fuck cars. We're just BMX bikes. Yeah. And we're going to wear spooky ookie masks. There was an X Games that was supposed to happen in Melbourne. And yeah. uh, then the bombs started falling. And these guys got away clean. They were like, we were built for this. Yeah. They had so much monster energy drink in their <laughs> veins that they could withstand the initial blast. <laughs> so Furiosa gets out of the rig. She holds her hands up in the air to let the rock riders know that she's unarmed. I'm unarmed. I've come to give you your fuel pod, just like we arranged. The deal that we arranged is still good. Wait a minute. This is the rock rider chief. You told me that there would be no one pursuing you. And there's like 18 people pursuing you. Uh... Can't get into the details of this, but I just thought they let me go. I didn't think they'd be this mad that I stole their most prized possessions. Because these guys are pretty chill usually. I mean, I guess maybe they'd notice if, like, one guy whose only job was to look through a telescope was watching (laughs) me as I left. But I thought that just wouldn't happen. All right. I mean, that makes sense says the chief of the rock riders. The deal's still on, boys. All of the the BMX bike warriors appear and uh they make the the sign of peace and yeah. then they gent they gently detach the fuel pod and they they leave Furiosa alone they, to travel yeah. safely through they the They bring cavern. her a bindle full of smoked meats from their from their, their kitchens. And as, as Furiosa leaves the canyon, they're like, oh yeah. And they detonate the canyon, closing it off so that there's no access for and Morton Joe and his Joe Joe trolleys. <laughs> foom, 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 foom. Oh, rock slide. Yeah, Furiosa's sitting pretty. They're driving away. No biker combat whatsoever that we need to describe. When we we smash to the other side of the rock slide, Joe's dirt armada is stopped. What are we going to do, boss? There's only a hole wide enough for your particular monster truck, the Giga Horse, to get through. Uh, we're, I'm going to, uh, I'm taking the Giga Horse, then 
the rest of you, one at a time, clear this perfectly. Meet up with me. Uh, I'm sure it'll take you at most 20 minutes, and then we'll all be one unified unit again on the other side. Okay. So, Immortan Joe leaves behind uh, his friends and new allies from Bullet Town and Gas Town, the Bullet Farmer and the People Eater, yeah. who are the Immortan Joe of those places. <laughs> And he, he climbs back into the Giga Horse and gives chase. Smash cut to the war rig, which is driving away, when suddenly Nux appears golem like behind Furiosa. He snuck through that pressurized canister of V8 juice <laughs> and emerged with his chain he in hand. Energized, full of essential nutrients. Beta carotene. Oh, yeah. The other one. Lycopene like a motherfucker. <laughs> uh, and speaking of uh, Jabba the Hutt's palace, he grabs his the chain that he has manacled to him, and he starts choking Furiosa, trying to garrot her with this uh, chain link chain. The brides are punching him, kicking him, trying to pull him back, and Nux is subdued by the velvety hands of these dandy fops. <laughs> Six sets of soft hands, gently pushing him backwards. There was nothing he could do. Honestly, I think Nux kind of is like, no, yeah, don't. No. I'm gonna, oh, don't. Oh, no. mm, don't. Don't pull me back. I don't let him fall seat. on me. Oh, no. You guys, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a war boy. No. <laughs> no, don't put moisturizer on me. <laughs> 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 Psst, <laughs> <laughs>